Hi, it's Katie Farner, and you're watching part two of my three-part series called Dash to Director. This training is designed for anybody who is wanting to pursue growing up the compensation plan. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right back in. Um, if you are seeing this, you should go back and watch part one. This is part two of the three-part series. Okay, so I'm going to pick up where we left off. We left off um, finishing up talking about the perfect consultant. Who are you really looking for when you're trying to recruit? Now we're going to talk about fundraisers. Fundraisers are a great way to help you grow up the compensation plan because fundraisers are really a great boost in your PRV, therefore your group wholesale volume. So it's something that you and your team members should be focusing on. So there are lots of different ways that you can do fundraisers. You can do a traditional fundraiser. You can do online fundraisers. You could do cent circle fundraisers. There are tons of ways to do fundraisers. Um, you can do a one-time event where everybody comes, places their order, and you donate a percentage of your commission. You can do, um, there's even an um, local leagues here that I've heard about who do events with consultants and once a month a consultant comes out sets up a booth sells product and donates commission so there's so many different ways that you can set up a fundraiser it's whatever you and the organization really ultimately need so why are fundraisers beneficial why fundraisers they help you get your name out there and they're gonna help you connect with more people mass quantities of people especially if you can get involved with school fundraisers or athletic club fundraisers. It really gets you connected with a lot more people. It also helps you build your group wholesale volume. When you want to promote to director, you need 10,000 group wholesale volume. So the more you personally do, the easier it's going to be to get you there. Also, the more fundraisers that your team is doing, the more it's going to increase their PRV and therefore increase your group wholesale volume. It also can help you hit your $2,000 sales bonus where you get that 30% commission instead of the 25. And it's a way to share and be generous. Fundraisers are also exciting because it can help you get bookings and recruits. Something that I do to offer kind of the cutting edge is I offer additional funds for parties booked. You can do, um, say, 5% of the sales or 10% of the sales off of any parties that you get booked because of a fundraiser. Or you can do $5. You can do a flat rate, $5 or $10 for any parties booked. That helps give you the cutting edge when there's places out there that are giving 60%, 50% of the sales. Of course, you would never give any money for parties booked until after the party has actually been held. So say you did a fundraiser in October and you got two bookings for November. At the end of November is when you would give them the money for those parties, whether it was a percentage of the sales or a flat rate. You also never know how who you're you know, you might get a recruit from it. You might find your next team member from doing a fundraiser. You also get all of the hostess rewards. Because of the fact that you're donating your commission, you get to keep the hostess rewards. So that's one additional reason why fundraisers are very beneficial. It can help you build your inventory or stock up on things to give as gifts. So you've got to get connected with people who are in charge of the fundraisers. The president, a board chairperson, a principal, an owner, a manager, a coach, a committee chair. So many people are looking for fundraisers. So many people are like desperately needing more funds for their groups or their school. So give outreach. One of the best ways you're going to be able to find fundraisers is through word of mouth and making sure that everybody in your network knows that you do fundraisers and that you're looking for them. So make sure that you really get the word out. And remember, fundraisers are a tax write-off, so it's going to be a financial benefit to you. It's important to have as many write-offs as you can at the end of the year. You get to choose what percentage of your commission you want to give, and there's really very little, if any, out-of-pocket expense. The only out-of-pocket expense you could have is if you're doing a traditional fundraiser with packets, and so you need to provide materials for the packets. But there's even ways to do that on the cheap, if you will. You want to give copies of order forms instead of actual order forms. So maybe each student gets 10 or 15 copies 
of order forms. And then that way there's not multiple multiple copies so the person ordering will not receive a duplicate when they place their order but that's typical fundraiser protocol you can also use showcase brochures or product lists to keep your cost down on packets don't give them full catalogs make sure that you are super prepared because if you make the fundraiser process with you very simple and very easy for the coordinators of the event they're going to want to continue to do fundraisers with you. So keep it professional and be prepared. There's also a great training on the workstation by superstar director Casey Stevenson. And it talks a lot about fundraisers. And I've listed those couple um, videos there. So the next one I want to talk about is motivation. Motivation is something that is important for us to use as an enhancement tool to get our team members moving forward. Everybody has a different personality. Everybody's going to have different things that are going to motivate them. It's important that you know personally what's motivating you and that you know as well what's motivating your team. So you've got to know your why and you've got to encourage your team members to know their why. I always tell new team members, if I don't know what you're working towards, I cannot be the best sponsor I can be to you. I need to know what you're wanting, what you're working towards, so I can in turn coach you exactly how to do that. Somebody who wants to sign up as a hobby is not going to be coached exactly the same as somebody who wants a career. It's completely different paths, completely different um, destinations, and completely different paths to get there. So. Recognition is an important part of motivation. It's important that you know their love language. Discovering their recognition love language is going to make a big difference because you could be recognizing somebody in a form that they don't even really relate to. Somebody might love seeing their name in lights. Somebody might love the recognition of getting something in the mail with their name written on it and you're not doing that. It's important that you know what is going to motivate your team members. There's so many different reasons why somebody would be motivated to start a business. Um, maybe they do want recognition. Maybe they're looking for financial freedom. They want praise. They want um, to save up money for vacations. They want to make more friends. They want to work towards sensi incentives. They want to be a stay-at-home mom. They got to make a car payment and they're having a hard time doing it. Um, they're trying to create a legacy. They want to earn incentive trips. Discovering that is important for them and for you. And again, make sure that you know the recognition love language. Make sure you know the ways they like to be rewarded. Because remember, what gets rewarded gets repeated. We are creatures of habit and we like to feel good. So. If we do something and we get a positive reward for it, we are much more inclined to do it again. And make sure that you recognize in simple ways. It doesn't need to be a huge deal when you're giving recognition. It could be a Facebook shout out. It could be a mailing. It could be a phone call, a text message, an email. You can recognize in simple ways. And don't go overboard with incentives. Incentives are important, yes. But if you do them every single month, your team members might not be as appreciative. So I would encourage you to do incentives, yes, but do them occasionally. So it's a surprise and it's exciting. And make sure that you're doing them in budget. You didn't sign up to sell Sensi to lose money. You signed up to sell Sensi to make money. So do not do incentives and offer prizes that are out of your budget. You, of course, need to be investing some of your income back into your business for things like incentives and motivation for your team and things. But make sure that you're doing a reasonable amount and that you're staying in budget. Remember that you cannot motivate the unmotivated. Our job is to create an environment where motivated people will thrive. You cannot motivate the unmotivated. So somebody who doesn't want something, you can't make them want it. You can't want something more than they want it for themselves. A lot of team members um, have come to me, and um, I know I did um, when I was first joining. I know I went to my upline when I was um, 
a consultant with a smaller team and it's easy to feel like oh, nobody on my team wants to do anything I want it more than them I'm trying to help them and they don't really care that's exactly my point you can't want something for someone more than they want it for themselves they have to realize the potential of the business on their own and they have to be motivated to make more of their business on their own so don't get caught up in that game of trying to motivate the unmotivated all you can do is create this environment this team culture where motivated people are going to thrive motivated people have every single tool they need to succeed because they're gonna take what you're giving and they're gonna run with it the unmotivated people they might not take it and they might not do anything with it but at least you know you're doing your part and it is available to them that's what we have to do so let's talk about your story and your why and how that is going to turn into um, your passion and how you're going to turn that into um, building your business so once you have your story developed it's so important that you write it down and that you share it everywhere make sure it's on your website make sure you talk about it at your parties your brand is a big part of this developing your brand is a big part of your story what are you working towards? What is this experience that you want people to have when they shop with you? What does it mean to be one of your customers? What can they expect? What sets you apart? Why are you different? Why do they want you? Use your story to connect with others. Your story is gonna succeed in one of two ways. Either A, it's gonna get people on board with you and wanting to help you grow and support you, or B, it's gonna encourage them to think, Hmm, maybe I could do that too. You know, I need that. Some of the key components in developing your story and your brand are your character, your credibility, your value, your emotions, your curiosity, and the timing. Because your story can change, your why can change. So timing is a big part of it too. Um, those of you who were around in 2011, there is a great um guide to developing your story in the spring sprint 2011 training book that we got so connecting through your stories is how you're going to build trust and form relationships and relationships really are the foundation of this business it's about know like and trust we need to ensure that everybody we meet everybody who becomes a customer everybody who becomes a host a team member all of those people know like and trust us and once you have your story Practice it because the more fluent you are in saying it and saying it effectively, the more effective it's going to be. Next, let's talk about keeping it simple. Keeping it sensey simple. We have a simple product with a simple business plan. So make sure that you are not overcomplicating things. There are four chords in this business. You have got to watch Orville's video on the four chords. I don't want to talk on it in this because I want um, I want I don't want to not do it justice. So um, go to the training center and watch Orville's video on the four chords. He presented on that at, at um, convention in Vegas, and it was amazing. So you have to watch it. It's a must watch. Orville's video on the four chords. It's in the workstation. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube also. So the core of our business is buy, host, and join. Buy, meaning you're selling products. Host, meaning you're doing home parties and basket parties. Both of them, not just one, not just basket, home and basket. And that you are recruiting. Those are the three core concepts of this business, buy, host, and join. So it's a very simple thing. It just requires you verbalizing it requires you asking it requires you talking about it so share your enthusiasm your passion and the fact that you're selling sensi that's all you got to do I always say if they can smell it you can sell it I don't like it when people say oh sensi sells itself no since he doesn't sell itself nothing sells itself if they can smell it you can sell it how are they gonna smell it you have to put it out there you have to put it out there. It's not, once you sign up to sell Sensi, it's not like this magic fairy dust is sprinkled all around you and everyone just flocks to buy Sensi. No, you still have to get out there. You still have to share it. So share, 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 share. 
And don't make it complicated. Don't overthink it. Just do it. This business is very simple. It's just, I, I always have in the back of my mind, how how can I move my business forward? What, what, what about this situation can help my business? Like that's what I'm always thinking. Like two, uh, last weekend, I was at a pumpkin patch for with my um, family and my nephew. And I was talking with the lady and she said, oh yeah, we have vendors um, you know, back in this section. And I said, oh, vendors, what kind of vendors do you have? Because my first thought is, oh my gosh, could I set up a Scentsy booth there maybe next year at the next pumpkin patch? I'm always thinking about my business. How can I get my business forward? And then when she said, oh, we have vendors like this and this and this. And I said, oh, okay, I sell Scentsy fragrance products. And so I wondered if you had things like that out there so I could participate in the future. And she says, oh, no, no, no. It's, it's just like food vendors and things. I said, oh, okay. Well, have you heard of Scentsy yet? I just turned it into that and gave her a product list. So I'm always, I've always got my business in my mind. It never slips my mind because my goals never slip my mind. The way I want, the way I want my life to look, you know, what I'm working towards, what I'm building towards, that never slips my mind. So therefore, my business and my goals never slip my mind. It's really that simple. So run it like a business, not a hobby. This is so important if you want to promote to director and beyond. It cannot be a hobby for you. So what does working it like a business mean? Okay, that means that you set certain hours that those are sensey hours. No fun, no fun in those times. I shouldn't say no fun because running your sensey business is fun. But I mean, no distractions. You know, don't have your favorite TV show on in the background and you're trying to catch up on your DVR shows while you're doing your sensey business. Don't have your um, baby with you when you're trying to work your sensey hours. Set aside certain hours when you know you can devote 100% focused on your business. Whether it's uh, 30 minutes in the evening when your husband is home um, after the kids go to bed, you know, or whether it's um, 30 minutes after your husband comes home and he is um, maybe giving the kids baths and you're doing sensey time. It's important that you make certain hours every week that are just sensey focused. And when you're spending this time on your business, don't let it just be busy work. Consultants can get so caught up in the busy work that doesn't produce in silly little things like spending all kinds of time on Facebook, spending all kinds of times in the forum, spending all kinds of times making little things and designing little things and, and thinking about all these little silly things that don't really mean anything. What means things? Follow-up phone calls from events that you've done. Follow-up phone calls to your customers. Reaching out and asking people to do parties. Reaching out and sharing the business opportunity. Reading a book that is going to educate you and coach you on things that you can apply to your business. Don't just spend time doing busyness, ruffling, rustling papers around your desk. Do things that are going to produce income. And use your calendar. You have a calendar for a reason. It's very important that you define what days, what parties, all those things, what, when you're available. Fill in your activities for your family and then fill in your work around them. And make sure that you have certain times when you know you're available to do parties and have those highlighted. And every month, your goal is to fill those dates. You don't want a highlighted day empty. You control that. No one else controls that, not your customers, not the town you live in. You, you control whether those dates in your calendar that are open for parties are filled or not filled. Nobody but you. So invest time in your downline. This is very important. Once you start developing team members, developing a team, it's so important that you invest time in them. I'm not saying you need to spend 30 hours a week talking to your team. By no means am I saying that, but I am saying invest time in them. Whether it's once a month, you at least send them one text message. Hey, how's it going? You know, is there anything I can help you with? Anything going on that I can be of assistance? And don't do it at the end of the month because then it seems like it's just about numbers. Do it at the beginning of the month. And in teaching your frontline to do the same, you're reaching out to your frontline and teaching your frontline to reach out to their frontline and et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera. That's how this works. That's how this works well, this business model. 
So engage with team development. Facebook is an amazing resource for developing your team and sharing materials and training with them. So engage with them. If you have a team Facebook page, make sure that you're posting in there at least once a day. Take a shower and get dressed before working your business. This can really help get you in the right mindset. Something about just being dressed and, and having your makeup on and feeling clean and fresh makes a big difference in your work ethic. So work in your office and try to keep it as separate as possible. Have your Scentsy business space where you can focus. You don't want to be working right next to your kitchen where you see a big pile of dishes right there, and that's going to stress you out and distract you. So make sure that you have your Scentsy space where you can focus and just get to work with what you need to do. Keep your Scentsy space clean and clutter-free. Do One way that you can really help is doing some sort of a meal plan to help you save time as well. This is something that I really struggle with personally. Um, <laughs> I... I can honestly say we don't eat well in my house. Um, I Heidi and Orville often say that they Heidi does not cook. Um, you know, because with anything you have sacrifice. Um, so one of her sacrifices is she really doesn't cook. Most meals they eat out. Um, so that's one of the areas where I sacrifice as well. Um, we don't. I don't really cook anymore. Uh, I don't have the time. I try to spend my time on things that are more productive. So um, if some, that is something that is important to you and you want to make sure that you do still have time for um, making homemade meals and things, do something simple like um, 30 meals in one day where you do all of your preparation. There's even an awesome training on that um, called 30 meals in one day. So that can really help you out as well with time saving. So hire your kids or neighbors to help you. Um, whether it's labeling, packaging orders, sorting bars, um, unpacking from an event, things like that. And one thing to think about when it comes to running a business, not a hobby, is you really, really, really got to make sure that you are working, that you are actually working. Are you, if you were hiring yourself, would you still have a job? It's something that you really need to ask yourself. You know, would I still be employed if I was working for somebody else? The way I'm working my Sensi business. What would I have gotten a promotion? Would I have gotten uh, a raise? Would I have gotten a free vacation? Would I have would I be getting praise and recognition for what I'm doing with my Sensi business if I was working for somebody else and giving it the same effort? That's how you really want to judge yourself, whether you're running it like a business or a hobby. So let's talk about the mind shift change from bothering to a blessing. Many, many, many people think, oh, I don't want to talk to people about the business opportunity because they're going to feel like I'm bothering them. I hear it a lot. You have got to change your mindset. This business is a blessing. This business is an opportunity for people to be their own boss, make their own hours, and have unlimited income potential. How is that a bother? It's not. So it's, it's going to seem like a bother and not a blessing if we make it about ourselves. So you're going to change it from bothering to blessing in your own mind if you stop asking yourself, what can this do for me? But what can I do for this person? It's the arrows out mentality. Orville has a great training called Arrows Out, and that's also in the training center. I definitely would encourage you to watch that one as well. So it's very simple. It's going to be a blessing when you discover their gap. The gap. What is the difference between the life they're living today and the life they want to be living? Okay, what is that gap? Is it an emotional need? Is it a financial need? What is in the gap? And then show them how Sensi can fill that gap. It's that simple. That's how you're going to shift it from bothering to blessing. You make it about them. You don't call somebody up and say, oh, you know, I really think you'd be great at selling Sensi, and I need a new recruit because I'm trying to earn these points. So would you mind joining so uh, I can get some trip points? Or, uh, I don't know, maybe host a party with me so I can get some trip points? That is bothering. Blessing is Hey, Janita, I'm calling you because you have been on my mind. 
I don't know if you knew this, but I signed up to sell Scentsy a couple months ago. Have you heard of Scentsy yet? Oh, yeah, 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 I use it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, cool, yeah. I decided to sign up to sell it because I thought, well, I like it. I'm going to make some extra money doing it. And ever since I signed up, you have been on my mind. And I have, I have been hesitant to call you because I didn't want you to think it was about me. But I think you would be so good at Scentsy. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to put that out of my mind and I'm just going to tell her. You know, I really think you'd be good at this. You are so sweet and friendly and you never meet a stranger. And with what you do, doing facials, working in the spa, it would be so nice to have a Scentsy warmer there in your room. I know that it could be a great asset, like side business with what you're doing. And I think you would be really, really good at it. You have a great personality for it. That's why you're doing so well with working in skincare. Bam, that's an example of how you would plant the seed with somebody and where it's not bothering, where it's blessing. You're showing them how it can enhance what they're already doing. It's as simple as that. So it can really be a blessing if you are doing it right, highlighting it as the blessing that it really is. So let's talk about internet marketing. Internet marketing is a huge resource that we have available to us that is free, 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 free. I love this thing here on the left. Um, it says, as of 2011, well, this is really old because it's 2014, so these figures would be even higher now, but as of 2011, there were 500 million active Facebook users. One in every 13 people on the earth are logged in on any given day. That's outrageous. 48% of the people in our ideal market, 48% of 18 to 34 year olds check Facebook right when they wake up. I know I'm there. I check my Facebook right when I wake up. And at the bottom of this, it shows in 20 minutes of Facebook, what is happening. Um, a million links are shared. Let's see, 2,716,000 photos are uploaded. 1,587,000 posts are made on people's walls. 10,208,000 comments made. I mean, this is outrageous. Facebook, especially, is a huge resource for your business that you need to be using. So let's talk about effectively using internet marketing. So there is Facebook, LinkedIn, so many social media sites. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, there are so many out there. If you are using them, make sure that you are using them effectively. I would not encourage somebody to hear this training and be like, okay, I got to go sign up for uh, Twitter. I got to create a blog. I need to go to LinkedIn. I got to get an Instagram and I really got to work on my Facebook. I would encourage you to focus on one at a time, work that well, and then add a second. So if you're on Facebook right now and you don't feel like you're effectively using Facebook, focus on that and really start effectively using Facebook. Maybe a month from now you feel like you're good with Facebook, then maybe add in Instagram. Do it slowly because you don't want to be um, mediocre at a bunch of things. You want to be great. So take your time and really learn it and get comfortable with it and then start adding more. That would be my advice to you on that. Um, I think Facebook is number one. I would say Instagram is probably number two. And then there, I would say LinkedIn is a good third one to add and kind of escalating from there. I personally don't have a Twitter. I don't think I have that much interesting to, things to say. <laughs> um, I just recently added uh, Pinterest, and so I'm playing around with that a little bit. Um, but only add it one at a time and kind of grow yourself slowly. Even blogging, blogging is so cool. That's something I want to get involved in, um, where you can just write little articles about Sensi, you know, and whether it's a business angle or um, whether you're talking about um, a great experience that you had with a customer, like there's or just product knowledge. There's so many cool things that you can share um, while about Sensi and then attach it to your website and get that kind of cross promotion there. So. When it comes to social media, you've got to make sure that you are reflecting your brand. Your social media sites are not a place for you to whine. They are not a place for you to complain. They are not a place for you to complain about the president or politics or 
this or that or this coupon person in the line in front of you at Publix, you know, your social media sites are a place for you to display and portray your brand. You can visit my Facebook page any given day and you will not see something negative. You will not see something nasty. You will only see something positive, uplifting, um, or maybe, maybe funny. I only post neutral things. I don't post anything controversial. And so I use it as a place to portray Six, I shouldn't say that. It's not portray. I use a place to I use it as a place to share my successes, share the positive things that are going on in my business. So, even if it's something like you send your team team member something in the mail, write a note in there and tell her to post a photo on her personal Facebook. And get some interest in her business and tell her to tag you in it, so you know she got your package. It's a great way to draw attention to her business and your business. Those are the kinds of things you want on your Facebook page because people are watching. Direct sales is a quickly revolving door. People come and go very quickly. So it's important that you show that you are serious and that you are around for the long term. And that's how you're going to do that. So they are watching your social media sites. Another tip with social media is use hashtags when you're posting, um, whether it's hashtag Cincy, hashtag mompreneur, hashtag, hashtag uh, vacation, hashtag Chevron, if you're posting a picture of a Chevron warmer, things like that. Using hashtags is going to get you more views and more views by people who you don't know. And that can turn into orders and that can turn into recruits. So when you're posting on especially Facebook and Instagram, use hashtags. All you got to do for those of you who don't know what that even is, is just put the hashtag and then type the word. So like say you were posting a sentence, um, I just love my black and white chevron warmer. It really sets off my Halloween decor, right? So in that sentence, I would hashtag, um, I would hashtag chevron, so you would just say, I love my black and white, and then have the hashtag symbol, and then the word chevron immediately following it. So I would hashtag chevron. Um, I love my black and white, hashtag chevron, hashtag sensi, hashtag warmer. It really sets off my hashtag fall, hashtag decor. That's how I would say that sentence with hashtags. You can also hashtag popular things like hashtag pick of the day, P-I-C of the day. That's also a popular hashtag that you can do um, really on any picture that you post. So remember that you're allowed one external website. So if you want to design your own website or have a website made, this is something that I'm actually looking into right now. Um, it can be pricey um, if you have someone else design it for you. Um, but you can also do it on your own. So you're allowed to have one external website, which is something you can look into doing. It's also a great idea to have a little avatar made of you or a logo made for your team or for yourself. Create your online presence. Use your online presence as a place to really get your brand out there. And make sure that every single social media site that you have has your picture as your profile picture not a picture of your cat or the moon or your daughter or your son. It has to be a picture of you. Now, you may love all those things, but this is your business and you need your face as the face of your business. So if you have a picture of maybe your cat or your dog or the moon as your profile picture, change it and make it a current up-to-date picture of you. So when you send your customers friend requests that you met at the home party last night, they don't get a picture of, they don't see a picture of a cat and they're like, who is this lady? I don't know her. Because they're not gonna recognize your name, they're gonna recognize your face. So it's so important that you get your face out there. Make sure that whatever you're posting in social media is in compliance, which comes into play with knowing our policies and procedures. Do not post things that are out of compliance, especially if you are a leader. You need to make sure that you are staying compliant. 
YouTube is an excellent resource. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk about this last um, because I would say this is something to get into after you have kind of enhanced the other internet marketing um, things available. YouTube is a great way for you to make training videos for Sensi, like I'm doing. It's also a way where you can make great videos showcasing products, highlighting your favorite things, showing different ways to use our products, things like that. Sorry for the dog barking if you can hear him. My husband just got home and my dogs are very excited. Um, there, are, there is an excellent article on developing your internet presence right here at this link I have shared below. So check that out if you are interested in reading more about your internet presence. So now let's talk about physical marketing. Physical marketing is how you're going to get your name out there, beating the streets, if you will, hitting the streets. So the Sensi Family Store is a great resource for things like clothing branding, business cards, um, card decals, customized pens, labels, all those things. The Sensi Family Store is a great resource and anything I can purchase for my business, I try to purchase from the Sensi Family Store just to support, you know, part of our Sensi family. So giving out catalogs is very important. Catalogs and samples to everyone and you can leave them anywhere you go. Now I shouldn't say catalogs. I leave showcase brochures and product lists everywhere I go and give them out to people. Like when I'm parked somewhere, I put my little Sensi sun shield in my window, in my, you know, dashboard or whatever. And then under the windshield wiper, I will leave some folded um, product lists with my label on them. So if anybody walks by and sees my Got Wax sun shield, they can grab one of those product lists. You can leave information with waitresses in the little tip thing. You can leave information for fishbowl drawing, drawings. You can leave information in the shopping cart. You can leave information anywhere. So another form of physical marketing that's really important is the phone. A lot of people hate when I say that, but yes, the phone. It's important to get on the phone and contact everyone. Whether you're brand new and you're working on your list of 100 and reaching out to all of those people, getting the word out that you're now selling Sensi and you are in need of their support to help you start your business off with a bang. Or whether you are a seasoned consultant and you're doing follow-ups or um, trying to get bookings, the phone is so important. So you can contact places where no flames are allowed to do some physical marketing, just calling places. You can call senior centers, retirement homes, nursing homes, mobile home parks, apartments, dorms, schools, businesses, fire stations, etc. Places where flames aren't allowed. You can offer to leave a display in their area or even offer to give a presentation about how Sensi is safe. You can contact realtors, uh, apartment complexes, car dealerships, and you can offer bundle discounts or, or combine and save bundles for a discount. Scentsy smells amazing and they make great gifts. So think about sharing Scentsy as gifts for people who own businesses. Whether you're looking at your list of 100 because you're brand new um, or you're going back through your customers, Think about who owns businesses. Who can you talk to about using Sensi as gifts, especially with Christmas coming up? You can also set up booths at um, a job, those job nights, like job fairs. You can set up booths at community colleges or large colleges, back to school nights, parents' nights. Hand out samples at colleges. College campuses are a great place to find recruits. So go up to a college campus one night, just yourself or maybe you and a team member, and hand out samples. Leave flyers and business cards anywhere that you see bulletin boards. These are all ways that you can physically get your name out there. And like I mentioned above, you've got to have a car vinyl. If you have a car vinyl, that's obviously great free advertising. So leave displays at places that you frequent and have great relationships. Offer them a loaner warmer and provide them wax and come in monthly and just kind of restock and check up and see how things are going. There are so many places that you can do that. Your bank, 
hair salon, nail salon, your gym, doctor's office, dentist's office, car dealership, small businesses, dry cleaners, vets, daycare, boutiques, um, oil lube places, break rooms, galleries. There are so many places you can leave information and set up lobby baskets. I have a video on um, how lobby baskets can help your business that I recently created here on the YouTube channel. So you can check that out. Um, work with a partner or a team member and go out and meet people and share a Cincy. It's as simple as that. One of our team members a couple months ago had to get together with her team and they went out and they like covered themselves in Cincy wear and just had a lot of fun and made a lot of noise and shared a lot of Cincy that night. You can do things like that. Just go out, have dinner, and brand the heck out of yourselves and talk Scentsy to everybody you meet. Um, you can mail letters or call local businesses. You can work with owners, like I said before, to give Scentsy as Christmas gifts to their staff. Always ask questions to spark conversation about your business or start something off with a compliment. You're meeting somebody in the line, you're waiting in line at the grocery store, strike up a conversation, be friendly. And then when you're done, hey, it was nice to meet you. Contact me if you ever have any need for Sensi and hand them your card with a product list and a sample. It's that simple. It doesn't need to be this over complicated, elaborate thing. Just meet people and give them your information. Let's talk about networking. Networking is obviously a very important part of your network marketing business. So, here are some ways that you want to work on networking. Connect with other direct sales people. You can even swap parties if you want to. You can have meetings where you can start local meetings where different direct sales people come together and share ideas and share leads on events. And you can go to these meetings and, and just share tips and ideas. Um, you can join a chamber of commerce. You can go to meetup.com and see if there's any networking events in your area. Join networking groups on Facebook. Also join events on Facebook, join groups on Facebook based on your hobbies. So maybe you like to scrapbook. Find groups and clubs on Facebook that are about scrapbooking. Maybe find local groups and clubs for scrapbooking. Networking like that is an important way to meet new people in your business, which is critical for the growth of your business. You can create a vendor blender event, like I mentioned before. Get a bunch of people together who sell different products, have them all come together and share and brainstorm and share leads for upcoming events. Get involved with your kids' schools or your church. That is another way to network and get new connections. And always ask for referrals. If you are not asking for referrals and specifically asking for referrals, you're missing out. So say that um, your friend Susan, you know, she's a good friend of yours. She buys Scentsy from time to time. She's never hosted a party. Um, and she's just, you know, she buys Scentsy from time to time from you. So you know that Susan works at a doctor's office. So so that would be a great person to say, hey, Susan, you know, I really appreciate all of your support of my business and shopping with me. I'm really trying to take my business to the next level, and I am looking um, to expand. So do you know anybody, um, maybe one of your coworkers at the doctor's office, maybe somebody in your family who you think would love Sensi who's not trying it yet? I'm doing this loaner program, and I'm going to loan warmers out to people who haven't tried it yet for them to experience it. And so I wanted to ask you if maybe one of your coworkers or somebody in your family or your close friends might be interested in trying Scentsy out for free. That's how you ask for referrals. It's gotta be specific. So next let's talk about appreciation. Appreciation is really important. It's very important that we show gratitude and appreciation for our hosts, our customers, our team members, our family and friends, anybody who's supportive of our business. So here's some fun ways that you can show appreciation. Um, let's talk customers first. So you could do a customer appreciation night at your house, maybe close to Christmas or something, and you just have some appetizers and you prepare these nice little um, goodie bags for people who come. You don't even have your products out. You know, maybe of course you have them in your office, 
um, on display for if people want to buy stuff. But it's just a customer appreciation night where you give out goodie bags and maybe coupons for the new year. And um, you just thank them for all their support. You can offer personal specials, of course, via email. You can also give booking gifts. And you can give coupons out after hosting. Like I've talked before on YouTube about how I give a coupon to my hostess for um, $10 and extra free product credit when they host a home party with me again sometime within the next six months. That helps me every month to be able to go back and look who hosted a party with me five months ago. Oh, I better call all of them and let them know their coupon is getting ready to expire. Um, you can also do a customer loyalty program. I use the customer loyalty cards from the Sensi Family Store, and I give them one punch per item that they purchase, um, over $3 in cost, and when they fill it up, they get a free bar. So if they order a six-pack of bars, I give them six punches. If they order a perfect Sensi system, I give them eight punches. However many items they're purchasing that are valued over $3, they get a punch for, and when they fill it up, they get a free bar. You can reward referrals. So when your customers send you referrals for new people, reward them. Because remember, just like with our team members, what gets rewarded gets repeated. I also do a mini spatula as a gift to anyone who spends over $50 with me. So let's talk about team recognition. So team appreciation, if you will. Um, give them acknowledgments or wahoos, you know, celebrate the things that they're doing, no matter how small, celebrate, a, celebrate any improvements, any growth with a wahoo and a celebration, have get togethers with your team, local get togethers where you just have lunch or breakfast or go to a painting party, try to have local get togethers with the team and get that team camaraderie. You can have one-on-one -on -one phone calls with your team members or meetups with your team members to show appreciation. And mail-outs is another great way to show appreciation. Whether you're um, mailing them a congratulations postcard for earning something um, or for a promotion, appreciation is really important. So let's talk about stepping outside of the box. A lot of times we can get stuck in our business and it's really important that we think outside the box and that we're always brainstorming to grow. So if you are stuck, it's time to get creative. And it's another great time to talk to your upline because if you are feeling maybe stuck and maybe a little discouraged, you never want to talk down or out, always up. Always talk to your upline whether it's your sponsor or your director. Never talk to somebody you've recruited or somebody who's about the same place um, in your business. You want to be upwards with your um, with something that may be a negative experience or something that you're thinking um, is frustrating or things like that. So you also want to stay engaged in trainings to keep fresh ideas flowing. The home office does a training call every single Tuesday. Um, hello, participate in that. That's a great way to keep fresh ideas flowing. Um, on my journey to director, um, I just, I, I mean, honestly, I did it on my own. I did it from listening to trainings that Sensi did. I did it from going to Sensi training events and reading books. That's how I did it. I did not have someone coaching me. I did not have someone saying, you should do this and you should do this. That didn't happen until probably about two years ago. A year and a half ago. So my journey to director um, was a journey where I kept fresh training, where I was engaged and kept fresh training coming into my mind. And that's what you need to do too. So it's another way to kind of reignite that spark. Make sure that you remember why you signed up to sell Sensi if you're feeling maybe stuck. Um, it's important to remember why am I doing this? Why am I passionate about this? What's 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 behind that? And stepping out of your comfort zone. A lot of times we're afraid to kind of think outside of the box because that tends to mean that we're going to step outside of our comfort zone, which can be scary. But hey, we talked about that before, that we it's a necessity, it's a necessity, it's an absolute necessity to step out of your comfort zone to run a direct sales business. And brainstorm. Spend, spend some time doing some research, um, checking YouTube, things like that, and coming up with ideas, ways to 
think outside of the box and help grow your business. Um, maybe have a, something different experience. Okay, so let's talk about the next thing, which is overcoming objections. This is a really important part of your journey to director because you're going to be here. You're going to be hearing a lot of no's. You're going to be hearing objections if you are asking which of course you have to be to grow. So let's talk about overcoming objections. There's so many objections that you can hear just to buying product. Um, objections to buying product would be allergies, asthma, I don't have enough money, um, the scent doesn't last. Those are some common objections that you could hear to buying the product. So that's when it's important to know your company and know your product know what is in our products have product ingredient lists printed out so at your home parties you can pull it out and say oh yeah here let me check and see if our lip gloss has such and such in it it's important to know our products and know what we offer you know if somebody says oh I don't have enough money to buy that Sensi that's that's so expensive that's not worth it I buy my wax from Walmart know why why should why should they be buying their wax from us how is it actually more cost effective to be buying our wax versus Walmart wax well because ours is gonna last double the time so it might be a little bit more money but it's gonna last easily double the time so you're actually going to be spending more money buying Walmart wax you know it's important to know those things so you are able to overcome those objections. What are some objections to joining? Uh, well, I don't have enough time to do that, or I'm too shy, or I could never do what you do. Okay, that's when it's important to create that connection and be able to know them well and be able to figure out the solution to that objection. You know, I would say the most common objection I hear to the business opportunity is, oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do what you do. No, 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 no. I couldn't. I couldn't be pushing people to buy stuff, and I'm not a salesperson. That's honestly the thing I hear the most often. And time. That and, and the time thing. Um, which the, uh, the way to overcome those objections is so simple. It's listening to them. You always want to listen, let them finish what they want to say, acknowledge what they've said, and address it. But if somebody said to me, oh, you know, I couldn't sell that, I don't, I'm not a, I don't like to be, you know, I don't want to be pushing product on people, blah, blah, blah. It's so easy to say, I agree, I don't see you as a pushy salesperson either. And that's why I approached you about this, because those personalities don't do well in direct sales. Being someone who is genuine and open and friendly is actually what does well and the type of personality that does well in this business and that's so the type of person you are it's simple somebody who says oh I don't have the time I couldn't do that you know da, 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 da. I understand trust me I know what busy is you know I, I'm mom of two kids and I work or uh, this or that like trust me I get busy but we make time for the things that we want and I started signing up to sell sense. I signed up to sell sense because I wanted to give more time. I wanted more time for myself and my family. So I'm building a business that's going to allow me to quit my job so I can have more time with my family. And now we run it like a family business. My family gets involved in my business. So actually, my business has given me more time with my family. And I know yours could do the same for you. Like, that's an example of how you can say, you know what, yes, I agree and I understand, and that's why this is different. So there's some great articles that um, are there are links to below on how to overcome objections, and I would definitely check all of those out. So this is going to be the last slide for this training. Wait, let me make sure. Yes, so this one's going to be the last slide for this training video, um, and then you'll want to watch part three. So the last one we're going to talk about is organization, which is clearly important. Um, you've got to have your Sensi workspace space clutter free. It's something that I'm always in the process of doing. <laughs> Um, so I had an event this weekend, so all of my bar warmers are in bags and all my bars are in the um, 
containers, and that's one of the things I have to do today, actually, is clean my office. Um, I hate doing it. I would, I'm the type of person that I hate back office stuff. I would so much rather be talking with people and doing training and talking with hosts and doing parties. Um, I hate organization and back office things, but I know the importance of it. So I will do it, even though it's not a favorite thing of mine. Um, so um, these are some tips to um, help you with your business and organization, um, even for tax reasons. So you want to have some sort of a file cabinet or folder um, for you to keep track of your monthly expenses. Um, you want to keep track of your mileage, any business expenses that you have, um, and you also want to have some sort of notebooks or binders or um, computer program that helps you to keep track of your past customers and hostesses. The workstation does do that for you, um, but I'm a paper person. I like my little notebooks um, that I use to keep track of my customers and hosts, which I have a video on um, in its organization system for customer follow-up. So you also want to have um, be very organized with your packets and things like that and your mail outs that you do. So have your hostess, potential recruits, and new recruit packets um, made up and ready to mail out when you need to mail them out. And then create like a system, an organization system of, okay, once a month on the 10th of every month is when I do mail outs for this. On the 12th of every month is when I do mail outs for this. So you have a system. Because you got to be doing things that as your team grows, you can still maintain to do. You do not want to, like let's talk about, um, this is kind of on a side note, but um, you want to be doing things that you can maintain. Um, so maybe you have a team of two. And each of those two team members, when they joined, you decided to give them a mini tester set as a free gift just for signing up on your team. Well, that's not something, you need to make sure that's something that you could actually financially maintain. You know, when you have a hundred frontline at one day, will you be able to have done that for every one of those hundred frontline? Probably not. So it's important that whatever you're doing, um, whether it's mailing out postcards or giving people gifts when they sign up on your team, you need to make sure that this is something that you can continue doing as your team grows in size. So um, that is Dash to Director Part 2. So now you are going to want to go to the third video, which will be called, hi. <laughs> so now you're gonna, gonna wanna go to the third video, Dash to Director Part Three. I'll see you then.